evening, good evening. Welcome, 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 welcome everybody to another edition of the Moment of Truth. Tonight we have a special guest on, y'all. Tonight we have Mrs. Crystal Carter, Carter Sade, the founder of Hey New Friends. She's a serial entrepreneur. She's a media personality. She has a lot going on, y'all. Welcome. And we are just honored to have her on our platform tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We don't need you Welcome, welcome, welcome to all that's joining us tonight. This is another edition of the Moment of Truth, y'all. We are here every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. We bring on individuals that's doing phenomenal work in their respective areas of work to come on, to share their story, to share their, 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 their backgrounds, their histories, what led up to the successes that they have accomplished today. Real business, what up? Thank you for joining us. Yes, indeed. This is the moment of truth. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those who have joined us thus far, do me a favor and hit that arrow that's at the bottom of your screen, if you may, and invite about 10 to 12 of your friends to this conversation. It's going to be a great conversation tonight, y'all. What's up, Mike? Hey, Michi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the moment of truth. Welcome, welcome. I hope that everyone's evening is going well so far and the moment of truth can make it even better. Carter Sade has a phenomenal story. She is she is one heck of an entrepreneur. She's doing a lot of great things. She's a philanthropist. She does a lot of great work in the community. So we just honored to have her on tonight, y'all. I see Carter just joined us. Hey, welcome, welcome. This is going to be an amazing conversation tonight, y'all. I'm super excited about it. Welcome, everybody that's just joining. So what I'm going to do now, first and foremost, um, on behalf of Community Connoisseurs, I want to thank everyone who has joined us thus far tonight. Thank you for your attendance tonight. This is going to be a great conversation. We have lifestyle media personality, serial entrepreneur, Crystal Sade, Carter Sade on, the founder of Hey New Friends. She's done so much remarkable work. She has a tremendous story and we're just super excited to have her on tonight. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Crystal's bio, and then we're going to tap Crystal right in and get right to the conversation. So Crystal, Crystal Carte Shada is a lifestyle media personality from Michigan who now resides in the District of Columbia. Early on, Carter developed a passion for helping others. It was because of this she went to attend Old Dominion University, where she received her bachelor's degree in human services and later George Mason University, where she received her master's in public administration with a concentration in human resources. Throughout her career, she has volunteered and worked for various service organizations. However, she wasn't fulfilled. Carter soon realized that she had given, she had given, she had given, had been given multiple gifts and talents, and she wanted to use them all. In 2015, she launched the Unashamed This Is Me blog, where she aspired to inspire men and women via her own journey to live their truths out loud, to stand in them, to own them, and to actively pursue purpose despite what that journey may look like to anyone else. Since then, this platform has evolved and allowed Carter to come from behind the keyboard, pen and notebook, and to use her voice as well. So that's just a little snippet of her bio, but we're going to bring Carter in to tell you a little bit more about herself and some of her, her past endeavors and some of her endeavors that she's working on now. Again, I want to thank everybody who has joined us thus far to the moment of truth. If, you, if this is your first time, welcome. Do us a favor. Hit that arrow at the bottom of your screen and invite 10 to 15 of your network, your followers to this conversation. This is going to be a really inspiring conversation. So without further ado, I'm going to tap 
Chris do have? What's going on? Good evening. Good evening. How that you doing? was such an awesome read of my bio. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a such it's such an awesome bio to read. It's definitely I didn't get to finish it, but we definitely gonna tap into some of the things that you have on your bio. But you know, you have an extensive background of great work, so we're just super excited to have you on. So on the behalf of Community Connoisseurs, I want to welcome you to the moment of truth. You could be doing anything. You have a, a million <laughs> things that you work on on a daily basis. You could be working on, focusing on, but you chose to spend your evening, an hour of your evening on here with us. So I wanted to thank you on the behalf of Community Connoisseurs for coming on tonight. Well, thank you guys for the invite. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Crystal, so do you mind if I call you Crystal or you? what do you prefer? I prefer Carter, but you okay. naturally are going to keep calling me Crystal. So go ahead. <laughs> okay. So Carter, okay. we're going to go with Carter tonight. So. Carter, there's a lot of people tapping in right now from your personal network, a lot of people that are coming on from our personal network as well. But for those of those people who are coming on right now who do not know who Crystal Carter Sade is, Thank let you. the people know a little bit about your background, where you come from, and a little bit, a little insight on your childhood. Sure. So um, as you stated, um, I do go by Carter. I am originally from Michigan, Benson Harbor, Michigan, to be exact. You know, sometimes when we tell people you're from Michigan, they automatically assume that you're from Detroit, but I'm not. So I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, and I've been in the DMV now since 2014. And so I now call it home. Um, as you said in my bio, I started off in like social work, human services, went on to public administration. And now I'm doing lifestyle media personality as well as like community engagements. So thank you for having me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. So Let's go to your childhood. Let's let's tap in a little bit about how you grew up in, you know, in Michigan. You know, like where you did how was your environment growing up out in Michigan and what about your childhood shaped you to be the person that you are today? Um, okay. So I I come from a very urban community, a small community. Um I absolutely love it. It's very, very, I would say, tight knit. Um, but very, the personalities are really, really big. That baby picture is hilarious. <laughs> um, so I actually was born in Germany. And so that's where that picture was taken. So I am a military baby. My parents, wow. both my parents were in the army. And so once they left the army, they decided to settle down in my father's hometown, like I said, by way of Benton Harbor, Michigan. And so I went to my um, local, I went to my local schools, but then I later transferred to this school across, you know, across the bridge. My family, quote unquote, wanted me to have a better education. Um, but yeah, so I'm a Ben Harbor native, and I'm really big on it. Nice, nice. All right. So you, so growing up, so you, so you, you. I heard you mention your parents. So you grew up yeah. with in a household with both of your parents, right? So I grew up in a household. I would say with both my parents until I was mm -hmm. about mm, maybe 13. Mm -hmm. So after that, my parents decided to split, and when my parents split, my mother moved me to Virginia, y'all. She tricked me, like. She tricked me. She told me that we were going for the summer, that we was going to go stay, see my grandfather, take care of my grandfather. But ultimately, you know, she wanted to stay. So I ended up going to school in Virginia. Uh, I think it was fourth grade, actually. I went to school in Virginia for a year, and I cried every day. Like, I literally went home and cried to my mom every day. I was getting in trouble in school because, you know, you got history class, right? So mm -hmm. in history, they was like, yeah, you know, name your state, name your city, name your bird. And I was like, oh, what's the capital? And I would say Lansing. And they're wow. like, you don't live in Lansing. This is not <laughs> Michigan. And I'm right, like, right. I'm only here temporarily. Like, I don't live here for real. Right. So, how old were you back then? How um, you so that now? was fourth grade. I don't even know how okay. old I was in the fourth grade. But yeah. I had this big personality in the fourth grade, too. But it got me in trouble. So um, after that year, my mother, like, shout out to my mom, because I know it's probably shout the hardest mom. thing. Yeah, it's the hardest thing for a parent, especially a mother, you know, to let go of her child willingly. And so my mother was just like, you know, um, I, I don't want you to be miserable. I know your father will do right by you. I know your father's going to take care of you. And so I'm going to let you go back. So the agreement was that I was going to go back and I was going to stay with my father. Um, I was going to finish middle school and high school. No, middle school. And in high school, I was going to come back. But of mm -hmm. course, I got to high school. I'm on a cheerleading team. I got my friends. You know, I'm in pageants. I was like, negative. I'm not going back. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so I stayed for high school. And so that's how I ended up back in the DMV because I wanted to keep the promise to my mother that when I did decide to go to college, I would come someplace that was closer to her. And right. so I was originally going to go to VCU, but that was in her backyard. And I was like, never mind. 
So I, that's how I ended up old, old Dominion. So most people be like, how did you end up at ODU? It's literally because I had a promise that I made to my mom to come closer. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing, amazing. Yeah. And I'm just looking at the picture of your mom. Wow, she looks like she can be like your, your friend, like your best friend or something. She is. She is. It's so crazy how, you know, you start building relationships with your parents as the, as you get older, right? Right. So, right. like, me and my mama are, like, super, super tight now. Like, when I was younger, of course, I was a rebel. I was like, eh, I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to listen. But now, like, that's the first person I call when I need advice. <laughs> right, right. So, is it safe to say that you were a daddy's girl growing up? All the way. I'm still one. Like, 100, 100% a daddy's girl. Like, wow. I am the diehard. I'm the, I was the daughter that his girlfriends would be like, is that your wife or is that your daughter? Because she's the decision maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my daddy. Um, so, so yeah, I was, it's, it's safe to say that you've always been bossy, right? <laughs> that is not bossy. safe to say. I always, I've always had a strong personality yes that's a, yeah that's a good way to frame it definitely definitely so one of the things i see because you said you and that's that's a topic that i definitely want to touch on right because yeah. like you know um in america over 60 percent of american african-american households do not have a father figure um, yeah. outside of them right and that's a yeah. devastating fact right right um in our community how important was it for you having your father in your life as you grew older um as you grew older and developed in your life how important was that um i would say it molded me in in many ways but it was extremely important i actually remember one time i ran for my local community pageant um miss mm -hmm. ben harbor and when i made the top five like this the speech that i gave was called a father's love Mm -hmm. And it was literally just about like, you know, men, I mean, people always give accolades to single women or single mothers, but what about fathers who are raising their children as single parents as well? Right. And so my daddy, like, my daddy did everything for me. When I say like, he learned how to comb my hair, like he washed my hair, comb my hair, detangle it, made sure I had my outfits. He crisped up my little pants. I had the little, you know, little crisp in my little jeans. <laughs> um, um, so my father made sure that I was straight. He picked me up from school every day. He dropped me off every day. He was there, like, 100% present. And I can honestly say that because I had that relationship with him, it helped, it helped shape me and mold me as an adult. Like, my decision-making process, the way I think, how I move. Like, I got my, I think I get my hustler spirit from my daddy, too. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it was <laughs> definitely a monumental thing. And I do, like, sometimes, you know, we take our parents for granted. And I take those right. parents for granted, too. Because sometimes he calls, and I'm like, all right, you call me, like, five times a day. Like, mm -hmm. goodbye. You call right. me too much. Um, but then I have to think of like, you know, dad, like this is my daddy. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. I, I quickly humble myself and I have those conversations because that man has made so many sacrifices for me, you know, just to be where I am today. And I'm just truly grateful. Shout out to Pops, man. Yeah. And I'm looking at these at these pictures, like your your parents are like they were fairly young raising you. Yeah. yeah um, so. so they were they were young and in love. They were married. I believe they were like in their they were in their early twenties. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice. And and they did everything they needed to do to make sure that yeah. you were you you had everything that you needed and you I mean obviously the work that they the things that they've engraved in you are manifesting today. So shout out to Yeah, so even like, you know, even after their separation, I'm grateful because my parents are best friends. So like I didn't wow. have to go through like the divorce where I had to choose one parent or over the other. Like it's never been like that in my household. Like to this right. day, I have three way FaceTime phone call conversations with my parents every morning we have a good morning call like every morning and so my parents are literally best friends they're not enemies um they're probably the first people that they call to go to if they need something you need a loan you need advice like my parents are best friends right exactly yeah. so you have a strong relationship with your, with your parents you know your yeah. dad your mom and that's beautiful you know what i mean and, mm -hmm. and that's family and that's a support system so i think that's huge to have you know oftentimes some things happen people separate but all, still having that foundation even if you're not together and respecting each other enough to understand that the child's life and that child's future is important salute to them definitely Def yeah definitely like you don't need the strife as a child right you don't want to hear your parents bickering and arguing and if they did i'm sure i'm pretty sure they didn't agree on everything they just didn't bring it around me and so i just always grew up feeling like my parents were like in cahoots like it was a partnership and everybody was there for the benefit of me so it was cool Dope. That's, yeah. that's dope. So really quick, for those who just joined, we have Crystal Carter Sade on. She's a she's a media personality. She's a serial entrepreneur, the founder of Hey New Friends, and which we're going to be talking about shortly. 
If you all have any questions for Crystal, please drop them in the comment box. I'm going to try, try to pin as many questions tonight as possible. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them in the comment box. We're going to pin them. And also, do us a favor. Hit that arrow at the bottom of your screen and invite about 10 to 15 of your followers. This is going to be a very inspirational conversation. And we want people to be able to get some of this knowledge and this wisdom Definitely. that Connor has. Definitely. So, you're, so we're still in the childhood phase, right? Growing up in Michigan. Growing up, growing up in Michigan. Michigan. You know what I mean? So, like, let's talk about, you know, some of the experience you experienced. I see that you had a basketball in your hand. Were you, like, like into sports and things like that growing uh, so up? Talk that's, about that. So that's so funny. So that was the year my parent got divorced, and that was the only activity wow. that I did in Virginia that I liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Um, basketball? YMCA basketball. So that's what Not my mama would, would let me do on the weekends. And so, yeah, I thought at first it was so funny because when, I, when my parents were pregnant, I guess, you know, I was a boy the whole, like, entire pregnancy. So they had my name picked out. Like, I was supposed to be a little boy. When I was born, um, when I was born or whatever, uh, it ca when I came out, there's a video. Of my dad was like, they was like, it's a girl. And my dad was like, no, it's not. Send it back. Send it back. Like, I have, I'm having a boy. <laughs> right. Um, but it was me. Um, and so, yeah, so, like, that was literally, like, the um, first time I actually played basketball. And it was only because my family, everybody, and my cousins, everybody played. So my mama made sure I played too. Now I was never really into basketball. I was definitely a cheerleader. Uh, <laughs> I was definitely a cheerleader, but that was my first time playing basketball. And I was decent. I couldn't dribble for real, but I could shoot. So right, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. So then you went off to high school. What high school did you go to out there? So I didn't go to high school out there. So I went back. Okay, that was you were just right. was like, yeah, she let me go back home and go with my father. And so I was mad mm -hmm. at my daddy actually because my neighborhood high school was called Benton Harbor High School. And it's like okay. all black, everybody super talented. It's I just loved it. So he let me go for literally a week. Like he let <laughs> me make the cheerleading team and everything and was like, now nah, you going to going to another school. So I could literally have walked up the street to my local high school. And my daddy drove me to school across the bridge every morning because he like, quote unquote, wanted me to have a better education. I'm not mad at it, but I still have my neighborhood friends, the people that I would hang out in my community. Yeah. But I wanted to go to school with my people. Like, yeah. it was so bad. Like, I guess I always been low-key a rebel, but it was so bad that I didn't go to my high school senior prom. Like, I went to my neighborhood prom. Like, I went to their <laughs> prom. I went to everything. Yeah. Right. So people was like, are you going to go to your own high school's prom? And I was like, that ain't my school. Like, this is my community. So I, like, felt... Yeah, so I had my friends, and I went to my local high school prom, even though I didn't mm -hmm. go to the school. <laughs> so do you feel like, how do you feel, do you think that going to that school help, was beneficial to, you, to, your, to your, um, your education, though? Do so I would say that, I would say yes and no. So obviously there were op more opportunities and more resources there for me, right? However, mm -hmm. my guidance counselors, they didn't look like me, and they didn't mm -hmm. put in much effort to make sure that I was getting what I needed. And so coming from like low-key, like first generation, my parents didn't go to college right away. You know, mm -hmm. my dad went to college for maybe a year and then mm -hmm. he dropped out, um, not dropped out, he left and went to the military because he had a daughter. He had his first child, my big sister, when he was in like 11th grade. And so he like, you know, college ain't really making me no money right now. I got to go to the military. So right. him doing that, you know, um, and my mom wasn't, she went straight to the military too. I was the first one to really go to college. So I didn't have that guidance and I needed those guidance counselors to help me get them scholarships, like all of that. And so I got one or two. I didn't get as much money as I know I could have gotten, but mm -hmm. people weren't there to help me. Now, my friends who right. were at the local high school, you know, there's some in, you know, in urban communities, there's programs in place to make sure these students get scholarships. Mm -hmm. So my friends got all the scholarships, like all the money. And I was like, dang, I should, I told y'all I should have went to the school because I, I had yeah. those grades. I could have got the money, but my counselors yeah. didn't look like me and they wasn't helping for real. So my answer is yes and no. So I, I heard you um, say that your father had um, an older daughter. Who yeah. You? How's your relationship yeah. with your older sister? Um, today is great. <laughs> so it's interesting because, you know, I think a lot of people probably can relate to the story of not growing up with your siblings, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my father had a child who, unfortunately, I did not grow up with um, because mm -hmm whatever the matter was him is her, him and her mother were kind of at odds so mm -hmm. that kind of kept us at distance but in my adulthood i got to build a relationship with my sister and Excellent. so things are like things are better now she is also her family's also in the military she was in germany for a minute but now she's in washington state so now that she's back here i'm looking forward to like going to see her she's supposed to have my second niece in february so that's exciting but i didn't grow up i didn't grow up with my sister i remember every year for christmas mm -hmm. i would write letters to santa and that's mm -hmm. what I would say. I used to be like, hey, like, you know, for Christmas, I just want to see my sister. 
I just want to talk to my sister like mm -hmm. every year. So mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated college, she actually offered me the opportunity to move with her. That's how I got here. Wow. So yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. We kind of have the same story in regards yeah. to that. I'm the same way with my older brother. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's amazing. So you also have little sisters too, right? You're uh, those are my babies. Yes, I have two little sisters. That's Kristen. <laughs> okay. Um, I have two little sisters. That's Kristen. She is 13. That's when they, so this is when they were actually babies to me. Mm -hmm. So I was the girl in college who had her sister in the dorm rooms all the time. So mm -hmm. I would like give it my mom, I would give my mom a break and I would keep them um, on weekends mm -hmm. or keep them during the week and they would stay on my college campus. So in my dorm room, my roommates loved them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I, it was exciting because I, I think I kind of planted the seeds for them to go to college because they are now they're like, oh, we know we want our dorm room to look like we know we want to decorate it. We know we want to study. But yeah, they spent their weekends at ODU with me. <laughs> so you kind of set the bar for your little sister because you all have quite a, a few years apart from each other. Right, right. So my yeah. youngest sister is 13 and the mm -hmm. oldest one is now is now 17 and just got her license. So pray for me. <laughs> wow. So how's that? How's that for you? Like being like an older sister that has like younger, like very younger si siblings. You know what I mean? They're coming up, they're yeah. growing in their environments. What type of advice do you give them as an older sister that's out here thriving and, and navigating through life? And yeah. I'm still at such an adolescent age. Like, what are some of the things and tips and pointers that you give to your younger siblings? So I try to be a walking example, right? So like I include them in my processes and things that I'm doing. I let them see all of my work, um, all of my work. And then I have like real conversations with them. So I have that relationship where it's very open, very honest, very transparent. You know, I definitely pour into them and figure out what it is that they want to do. But I'm just literally the walking example. I'm very hands on as a sister. I try to spend as much time as I can. I am the sister that calls, FaceTimes, texts all the time, even when they don't answer. Um, even when they don't answer, I still pull up on them and pop up for special events. Like, you know, now we have COVID, so they're at home. But I used to pull mm -hmm. up to the school on birthdays and things mm -hmm. like that, made sure they had birthday parties. Because, like I said, you know, I really wanted that relationship with my little sister, with my big mm -hmm. sister. So when I became a sister, I wanted my little sisters to feel all of the love. Like, I don't want to miss any moments. And so those are those are my heartbeats. Like, I respect those that. are my babies. I respect that because that's a selfless way to be, a selfless way to be, right? Like, yeah. we've been selfish and like, uh, oh, kind of, all right, they, they, those are my younger sisters. They don't really, there's no connection there, but you make it your yeah. duty to be that presence in their lives because sometimes they need that, you know what I mean? As you, yeah, and it's not like I try to like, like yeah, it's not like I try to beat down the block of what I'm doing. It's so funny right. because the youngest one, Kristen, she's like, you know, you're going to be the entrepreneur. I'll be the I'll be the doctor and Kayla will be the engineer. Like mama uh -huh. has everybody. And so I'm like, yeah, that's dope. Like you're going to go to school. You're going to be a doctor. But right. yeah, so. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. Really quick, for those who just joined, welcome to the Moment of Truth. We have Crystal Cade, Carter Sade um, on right now. She's a serial entrepreneur. She is a radio personality. She's also a philanthropist. She does phenomenal work. She's been down here in D.C. for a couple years now, and she's really made her mark here in the city. And I just wanted to bring her on tonight just to highlight her efforts and everything that she has going on. And also, for you all to hear her story and get inspired by it, or even connect with her and support her. So Thank welcome you. to everybody who had just came on. If you just came on, please do us a favor. Hit that arrow at the bottom right-hand side of your screen and invite a few of your friends to this conversation. we just getting started, y'all. So, Kristen. I'm yes. Sorry. Right. <laughs> go ahead. Because I knew the correction was coming. So. No, I wasn't going to correct I, you. I told you, you have, you can go ahead. <laughs> Carter, so Carter, being here in D.C., you know, um, well, let's, let's piggyback. Let's go back to your college days. We're going to yeah. talk about your D.C. experience really quick um, in, in, a, in a few. But I want to talk about your, 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 your time when you were in college over at Old Dominion. Tell us about that experience at Old Dominion. It was different. So, like... Um, everybody, everybody jokes because they say, um, ODU is a PWI that turns into HBCU at night, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That's facts. So, like, my mm -hmm. class was, like, the biggest class of Black people that they had at the university. Um, that was when they was like, okay, we're gonna change the numbers. And so, mm -hmm. ODU is actually very, very, um, diverse. However, when I say it was different for me, it was mm -hmm. because, um, I'll say the culture was different. So, the DMV, um, was already different. So, ODU had a lot of people that was from NOVA. And I didn't know what Nova was until I came here, obviously. So, and so, you know, the way our lifestyle, the way we grew up was different. Like it had a lot of suburban kids and I wasn't a suburban child. Right, and so right. like, you know, I would see people, I remember when um, 
I was the first time I went to the mall and they was like, oh, we're going to go to Nordstrom. I had no clue what Nordstrom was. Wow. Like, I had never been to they Nordstrom. They had Nordstrom in, in Michigan? No. I mean, if they did, it wasn't in my city. And so, like, you. so all of these designer name brands, I had no clue. Like, there were clicks of girls on campus that were wearing Michael Kors. I didn't know what that was. So, and what I, were you um, wearing? Um, we, like, like, I wasn't wearing really designer labels. Like, I had a nickname gotcha. when I was growing up. My nickname when I was in Trillian Camp was Lil Fubu, literally. Because I used to wear Fubu, like, I used to wear Fubu okay. everything. I had the shorts, the jackets. Like, my daddy made sure I was laced in Fubu. That's probably as far as, like, my designer. Hey, shout way. out to Fubu, Damon John, man. That's a black owned, yeah. you know, that's a minority entrepreneur, man. And he's a, a billionaire. So Yeah, I definitely the got the nickname Lil Fubu um, mm -hmm. in, my, in my childhood days because that's all I would wear. And so, like, that's as far as, like, my designer went outside of, like, wearing, you know, Air Force mm -hmm. Ones and stuff like that. So, yeah, so when I got here, I just kind of fell out of place because I was just like, you know, they, like, had this, like, luxury lifestyle that I don't know yeah. much about. Like, yeah. you know, they going to five-star restaurants when they in middle school. We didn't have that. Right, like, right. so I didn't know anything about the Ruth Chris and the Dale Frisco's and things like that. So coming to, you know, ODU was just different. Like, I was like, I don't know if I fit in. Like, they a little too bougie. Like, it was different. Exactly. It was different, but um, I found my fit. I found my friends, and it was a good experience. Yeah, I mean, you you were you. You know what I mean? All the yeah. materialistic things, they're cool, you know. If yeah, but I also that, got, like, you know, yeah. I also made some friends from Northern mm -hmm. Virginia that showed me some different mm -hmm. stuff. Like, and I appreciate them. Like, they put me on to some of the luxury that I just didn't know about, you know? And so when you just don't know, you just, you kind of feel insecure about it because I right. don't know anything. So I had... You know, I had those friends that pulled me in, like, this is this is the type of wine you should be drinking, like, so you can have conversations when you out. Like, this is what you wear. Like, you should show up in this space and wear this. Like, wear this outfit. Like, so I had those friends, and I think, you know, they was, like, my little angels to help me elevate in life because you, when you don't know and you don't see it, you know, mm -hmm. you need those type of people that's going to help you ele elevate in life. Got you. Clearly, yeah. clearly you listening about it. it looks like <laughs> I like that you picture. Styling, <laughs> you styling and profiling in that picture. I had to drop that one really quick. Yeah, but, that's um, funny. So then after that, you know what I mean, you, you went to ODU and then you ended up going to George Mason. Let's talk about right. the George Mason experience a little bit. So when I got out, when I went to ODU and I graduated, um, I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do immediately after college mm -hmm. in terms of what higher education looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So at first I thought I wanted to go to Howard, I wanted to go to law school. So mm -hmm. I started studying for the LSAT, bought all the books, did all the study, and then realized like, I don't necessarily want to be a lawyer. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I then applied to Howard for other programs and they took forever to get back. And I just knew that I had already taken a year off after I graduated to figure out what I wanted to do. I mm -hmm. was working at like Bath and Body Works until I started working for Arlington County um, mm -hmm. government. Gotcha. And so I took a year off to try to figure out what it is that I wanted to do. And so in that year, I realized I didn't want to go to law school. And the closest thing to it would have been like public administration because I would still, gotcha. you know, be able to implement policies. But then I decided to do my focus on human resources. So, yeah. Nice. So that's how I ended up at Mason. It was not my first choice, but shout out to Mason. Because oh. if I, because like just being transparent, I, if I would have chose my education differently, I would have went to HBCU. I really mm -hmm. wanted to go to one. Um, but again, like ODU was closer to my mother and it gave me mm -hmm. a little more money. And then when I went to college, I ended up not going to Howard. They wasn't responding. So I just didn't want to wait. Like I don't like waiting. Yeah. So I, I kind of like, I kind of like have my thoughts about. You know how some people are like, oh, you should have went to an HBCU. You yeah. have to, you're, you're black. Why didn't you go to an HBCU? Why are you going to these PWIs? Yeah. I, really, I really, I think it's the content of that person's character. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you're uh, going to a PWI and you still stay true to who you are and your culture. It what worked out for you. Yeah, it worked what out for you. But... Why? Yeah, like, why is it like that we, why, why is it that we feel as though we aren't, we shouldn't go to PWIs? You get what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a catch, a catch 22 because I'm like, um, I feel like I went to HBCU because all my friends went. So I'm at their yeah. homecomings. I'm right. like, you know, being in BC, you get to go to Howard events. So I still feel like mm -hmm. I'm a part. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm a part, but I do think, honestly, the experience is different. The love, yeah. is, different. The love is different. The community Definitely. that you build mm -hmm. is different. That support is there. So even back going back to what I'm saying, my high school experience was different because the people didn't look like me and they wasn't trying to help. Exactly. I do think it would have been a little bit different. My networks mm -hmm. would have been a little bit different if I would have went to HBCU. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But I yeah. do agree. If that's what you, the journey that you want to take, yeah. so be it. Just be true to yourself and be the difference maker on that campus wherever you go. Exactly. Um, exactly. So going, coming fast forward to you being at DC, okay, you, you're here now. Oh, right. 2014, you here in D.C., you're in this new environment, totally different from Michigan. 
you, you know what I mean? You come down and tell me about being here. I'm a native Washingtonian and I right. know my city, right? Yeah. And DC is very unique. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We have our own style. You know what I mean? Just the way we move, the way we operate is something different. Tell us about being from somewhere outside of D.C., from Michigan, and yeah. coming to D.C., how was that for you? Were you able to, what were some of the, the, the things that you felt were, you know, like areas where you thrived in, and where were some of the areas where, that were challenging for you coming from where you were from, trying to, you know, understand the kind of like the territory a little bit and get connected with people? You know, what were some of the challenges that you dealt with? Um, I was definitely the small town girl with big city dreams. So it was always my goal to live in a big city. So I really wanted to live in New York. I still want to live in New York. Like before, oh, wow. before I leave this earth, I'm probably going to live in New York for some time. Okay. Because I just don't want to be one of them people who has regrets later. Like, I don't want to tell my children, like, I always wanted to live in Harlem and never right. did it. So if I even got to go stay, like, you know, sublease an apartment for like two months, that's what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to go live there. But yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I always wanted to live in a big city. I think the difference when I came, um, the shock was, you know, I always heard about D.C. being chocolate city. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I was looking forward to, because my mother um, actually lived in D.C. So mm -hmm. she lived in D.C. for quite a time um, working for the FBI before she moved on to where she was at. And so I always knew that D knew D.C. to be Chocolate City. So when I didn't experience that, it was just like, what? So mm -hmm. um, when I originally moved out here, I moved to Waldorf, which is not D.C., obviously. <laughs> um, so I moved to Waldorf. And then um, after I moved from Waldorf, I moved to Alexandria. And so once I moved from Alexandria, I was like, I want to be with my people. So I left Alexandria and moved straight to Southeast. And so <laughs> most people be okay. like, you went from Alexandria to Southeast, but I loved it. Like, my little first apartment on my Nothing own. Nothing wrong with Southeast. Yeah, I know. But when I tell people <laughs> that, and I'm like, oh, they be like, where you from? I'll say Michigan. Then they be like, oh, where did you live? And I say Alexandria. And then they be like, okay, so how did you end up in Southeast? And I'll be like, literally, after my lease was up, I was like, I want to go to the, I need to go be closer with my people. And if right. I was going to try to get a little bit of Chocolate City, then, you know, that's what I needed to do. So I moved to Southeast um, off Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I had the best time of my life, like, living right. in Southeast. And so that's when I started to like make my mark. So even though I wasn't from here, I was attending community events. I was meeting up with like locals. I'm gonna call you a local. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was meeting up with um, people such as yourself that were doing mm -hmm. things in the community so I could find my fit. So I right. think it was hard navigating this space originally when I was just living in Virginia because mm -hmm. it just wasn't, a, it wasn't the yeah. population yeah. of people that I wanted to be mm -hmm. surrounded by. I feel that. Yeah, and so, but it wasn't that hard for me to get here and make friends. It wasn't that hard. Definitely. I mean, you're naturally you're you're a great networker. I must say, <laughs> kind of how we networking. And I will say this: like, thanks for highlighting the fact that you know, oftentimes when people come to D.C. from different places, yeah, one of the places that they say do not go is Southeast. I'm from uh, all the time. In Southeast, yeah. and I'm a product of Southeast, and I think I'm a pretty decent individual. So there's a lot more people like me as well. So Southeast isn't that bad, guys. For anybody who just got here from a different state yeah. you want to move to southeast you have great people there as well but dc and, and a whole welcomes you so yeah. um you um so so you said it was pretty it's pretty decent you know in regards mm -hmm. to networking and getting to know people and kind of uh, navigating yeah to this would it be safe to say that you're still kind of like open and you know meeting new people you're navigating always like, to know I, people like, in the city and things people. like that yeah, right. I love people, like cool. you said. Um, I'm actually naturally a networker. <laughs> um, I just like to fill in. I just like the feeling of being connected, like you know, feeling mm -hmm. out I can help people. It's like so, if you were be able to talk to me and you say, "Hell, this is what I'm interested in," nine times out of ten, I could be like, "Oh, I know somebody that's doing that," or "I know somebody you should be talking to." And Absolutely. you know, I like doing stuff like that. So that's how my like networking, connected skills come into play in ways that make me happy. That's how I feel like I serve my purpose by helping other people mm -hmm. like elevate in their own lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's huge. That's huge. And speaking of elevating um, lives, like you do a lot of philanthropy. Work. You actually um, came out and, and I want to thank you publicly on live for you and your organization coming out and supporting our annual hair freeze um, winter drive that we did on Monday where we were giving out um, coats, to the community winter items in general, coats, hats, yeah. socks, you name it, and also giving out free haircuts. And it was an amazing event. And you and your partners uh, with your organization, Hey New Friends, came out and supported mm -hmm. that and spent the whole day with us giving out the items yeah. that we had. I want to personally 
Thank you on it to have a community connoisseurs for that. And um, just highlight the fact that ever since that I've known you, you've really been in those, you've been filling those gaps when it comes to like coming out, volunteering, putting, mm -hmm. not, putting the, it's not only about business with you, you actually want to serve. And to yeah. come into a city where you're not even from and your, your, your knowledge is in some respect, you're still learning about the environment. Definitely. And to come into communities, uh, you know, under underserved communities and serve, that's commendable. So talk about you. Like, where you kind of like cultivated that 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 um that that place in your heart and your spirit that that allows you to come out and just, you know, serve communities, you know, whether it's in Michigan or mm -hmm. whether it's in DC, like what kind of shaped you to want to get into that type of work? Um, I attribute that mo mainly to my mother. My mother was literally like the mom that would give you the shirt off her back if she needed to. Like if there was somebody in my classroom who like their house caught on fire or something like that happened, my mother would send me to school the next day with a bag of clothes to give to that person. Um, so I think that's where my like giving spirit came in. And when I created Hey New Friends, I always created it with the idea that we were going to be in the community because I ultimately believe that you can't plant yourself in a city and decide to call it home and not know what's going on in the community because you know people are already here people are already living here like you just can't come and like quote unquote what they're doing now gentrify an area and act like the people that were there don't exist and mm -hmm. that there's not a need there so for me that's where the passion comes in because I'm like okay if I'm going to be rooted if I'm gonna call this place home then I have to show up in the community too like I can't just enjoy the luxuries of living in the city, but not want to be in the trenches when it comes to the problems that exist. And so that's why I'm passionate about um, giving back. And it's interesting because I would have never considered myself to be a philanthropist. I never said that. Um, actually, I never would have given myself that title, mm -hmm. but I do enjoy giving back to the community and trying to be of service to others. And when I originally got out of college from Old Dominion, um, what I, when I wanted to go to law school before then backtrack. I actually wanted to work with prisoner reentry. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do reentry programs. I wanted to help people find their ways back into society, right? So right. I actually got a job opportunity right out of college to work at a women's prison in mm -hmm. Alabama. And wow. I remember my dad was like negative. Like <laughs> he was like down. Yes, he was like, um, he was like, you never, like, you're never going to go work in a women's facility. Like, that's not what you're going to do. But mm -hmm. I was all for it. I was like, yeah, dad, you know, I just got to work and, you know, do this for a year. Then I can go ahead and I can be like, you know, a, a guidance counselor or whatever it is that I wanted to be a social worker when I thought I wanted to be a social worker in the prison. And so mm -hmm. I remember I did this internship in Chesapeake, Virginia at St. Bride's Correctional Facility. And they were just like, your personality is too bubbly. Like, we love you, but you don't belong behind <laughs> these. They was like, you don't belong behind these walls. Like we need right, people right. like you on the outside mm -hmm. to help these people come home. Mm -hmm. And so that's originally where my heart lied. And my community service work started with prisoner reentry. Like I just was wow. really big on helping people come home. Yeah. That's amazing. Like I've never yeah. known that about you. And that's interesting. That, and thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So it was it was cool because when I when I did decide that okay, I wasn't gonna go ahead and work in the prison and mm -hmm. I started working um for social social work organizations, I mm -hmm. would work with like prisoner reentry programs, even just doing food stamps. So like snap at programs, helping those who were ex offenders like work on their resumes, like creating resumes based on the skills that they had in prison. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I was doing. So wow. and that's when I was happiest. So yeah, that's where my service came in. That's amazing. That's amazing. So for those who have just joined, we have Crystal Carter Sade, serial <laughs> entrepreneur, media personality. Uh, she's out in the community, serving the community, originally from Michigan, and have brought, brought her talents here to D.C., has been in the community, in the trenches, serving since she's been here. For those who have just joined, uh, welcome to the Moment of Truth. This is a segment that we do every Thursday where we bring individuals like Crystal who is doing great work in their communities and their respective areas of, of, of profession to come and share their stories, you know, to inspire and, and, yeah. and to share some of their present endeavors as well. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. You are really good at this recap. Okay, yeah, personality. I'm, if I hear from you, I'm going to take that. I'm going <laughs> to own that, all right? So um, I'm going I'm to, you know, I'm going to read some of the comments because, you know, there's a lot of love on these comments, uh -huh. you know? A lot of people, we have Tanisha said, I agree. She's very personable. Keep keep doing it, love. Oh, thank you. We have a hundred. Shout out to Natural. Natural. He's in. He's one, He sits on our youth advisory. You know Natural. You yep. met Natural. Um, yeah, you got a lot of love. We got Michi. gave you the fist pounds with the hearts and the, 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 the hands up. <laughs> um, 
Kaddish Ade has always been of service, been about it. We have Mike said we appreciate you. Oh, we thank y'all. Sierra said that's awesome. So it's a lot of love in this chat group right now. And thank um, y'all. You know, and, and people are here and they're super excited to hear more. So we're gonna get right to it. So <laughs> Carter, we're not even halfway through this interview, y'all. Yeah, we got so much content for you. She's been doing so many great things. So let's talk about, you know, you being a content creator. Let's dive deep into to the the art of content creation for those who don't know what that is. And yeah. talk about how you got into it and some of the things you specialize in in that area. Yeah, I was going to say, it comes in many forms. I think that um, some people think that you got to have all of this fancy equipment to get started, but you don't. You just need a ring light and an iPhone. <laughs> a ring light and an iPhone and a brand story. And so, like, my content creation kind of started, like, back in the day when I told you I started that blog, Unashamed. This is me, like, being unapologetic about who I was and how I was showing up in spaces. And so I would start getting brand deals with journals, like, people who had journals that wanted to put out their journal or um i got like a lot of like religious clothing this was back in 2014 like a lot of like religious apparel from different mm -hmm. organizations because um i'm also very spiritual uh so i will always preach about like you know god's purpose for people in their lives and i would get things like that but i think that like you know my content creation started just right here literally right here on instagram and just being true wow. to myself and speaking on the things that i was interested in and so i wasn't always a speaker let's be clear i wasn't always somebody that wanted to talk I hate to hear my voice like I speak extremely fast um and I hated hearing myself talk so I started off as a writer so everything I did came from a blog and then later I was like you know what I don't want to just blog anymore like that's boring so I wanted to create videos I wanted to speak you know I started my own podcast and did things like that and so that's how I go about creating my content um yeah I'll, I'll leave that there because I'm like, a so forward thinker right like what are some of the some tips that you can give people who's interested in starting, you know, doing some of the things that you've done. Like, what are what are some tips for like content that you can drop on some people that's in that same field of like being a content creator? I think for me, it's all about stuff like yeah, that. On I think for me, it's all about being authentic. Um, know your brand story. Know what you stand for. Know what how you want to show up and present yourself in a space. And if once you know those things about yourself, it's easy to start telling your story, right? It's easy to start telling your story. It's easy to connect to people that are in line with what what you're doing. So it doesn't feel forced. Because I hate. I'm going to say, I hate content creators who just literally do ads all day. Like, mm. ooh, I'm drinking this smoothie. Ooh, buy these things. But they really don't be using this stuff, right? So right. you got to right. make sure you implementing that type of stuff into your lifestyle. And, and then it flows naturally and people buy into you because you become the brand. And so, mm. like, once you become the brand, they're like, oh, I can see her doing these things. Like, oh, that really fits her personality. Oh, she got the sponsorship from these shoes. That is so her style. Like, you know, mm. it makes sense. So you're just not doing stuff just to say like, oh, ad, posting an ad. I got paid to post this. And it don't have anything to do with what it is that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. Right. Like, that don't make sense. So mm -hmm. I think it's just literally just knowing who you are, like knowing who you are, knowing your brand story and putting that out to the people, like showing who you are, your authentic self. And then from there, when you start reaching out for like, you know, you're going to start getting engagement. You're going to get the mm -hmm. followers. And so when you start reaching out for promotions or sponsorships, you're able to say this ties into my brand because like my audience knows, mm -hmm. knows me for this. Like, you know, so that's what I'm able to do now. But so like for my, I think last year when I started my um, sponsorship with Shoe Dazzle, it was because I was like, yeah, my people know I love shoes. Like if you send me free shoes, I'm going to wear them. I'm going to wear them in my photo shoots. I'm going to wear them out when I go in the city and I'm getting dressed and y'all going to get all the accolades for these shoes. And so what I do, they gave me the brand deal. I was posting new shoes every um, two, two pair of shoes twice a month or whatever for them of me just being out in the city, going to happy hour or whatever it is that I was doing, but I was showing up in these shoes. Like, wow. so yeah, just being authentic. Wow. There's so many ways that you can, you can, you know, get your brand out there with just make money as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was something that like when I met you and you were kind of breaking that down mm -hmm. on how you were doing that, like, to be honest with you, I didn't know it exists. <laughs> you know what Making I mean? Making money off Instagram? You didn't know that? I mean, you I knew you could make yeah. money off Instagram, but like, <laughs> having sponsorships and things like that yeah. i guess i didn't really look too deep into it but when you started breaking down the mechanism i'm like shoot i might want to <laughs> get a brand behind yeah because i think sometimes people get you know when I mean? they think about yeah. yeah i think when people think about yeah. influencer the influencer word um you feel like you got to have 10k followers or more you don't yeah like people yeah. get sponsorships with a thousand followers or less even mm -hmm. it's just your engagement it's that authenticity mm -hmm. it's like if i put my product in front of your people 
how is that going to translate back? Like, are they going to buy from me? Because right. they buy, because they buy into you. So it doesn't matter how many followers you got. It's it's literally that influence. Like, do people right, trust right. you enough to buy what it is that you're about to showcase that you're utilizing? So um, I think people get hung up on like the whole you need 10k followers when you don't. You just need mm -hmm. high engagement. So a person could have 500 followers, post a pic, and it only gets 250 likes. So what? Mm -hmm. Like, who cares mm -hmm. that it got 250 likes? It can be mm -hmm. saved. You don't know how many times that person, they, you know, that post was saved, how many times mm -hmm. it was shared. And then it could have 30 comments. That's high mm -hmm. engagement for a page with 500 followers. Right. And so you just got to know your insights. Right. And and yeah. definitely. And that, thank you for dropping those, those yeah. views because you are very insightful on the work that you're doing in that area. And I definitely wanted to kind of, you know, segue into your media personality career. How did that yeah. start? What inspired you to kind of get into that type of work and tell the people some of the things that you're you're you're, you're working on right now and you have working in the past to get yeah. you to the point that you are um, right now. So I, it's interesting because like we just talked about all my little degrees and mm -hmm. how you know they have nothing to do with being a media personality, right? That's not marketing. That's not communication. Mm -hmm. That's not journalism. It's not PR. It's none of those things. It's none of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but it was something that I knew that I wanted to do. Like I used to get on Instagram and YouTube and make motivational videos and wow. people would share my videos like all the time, like share my videos mm -hmm. all the time. And I used to be like, dang, like they don't even know. Like I woke up in the morning with that message on my heart. Like a lot of the things that I share is to inspire me. And so mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, healing myself, I'm inspiring others. And that felt mm -hmm. good to me. So mm -hmm. I would drop these motivational messages on different topics, but they will really be messages that I needed for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and that just shows how relatable that you are. Like we all right. the time think mm -hmm. that we're going through things by ourselves, our own struggles mm -hmm. in the dark, and you're not. Like people right. really be out here with the same issues, and they be yeah. wanting to hear somebody talk about the same issues. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how I started. I started off just you know literally talking about my day to day, the struggles that I was having, but I would mm -hmm. put it in a way like you know empowerment. Like this is mm -hmm. what we're gonna do today, y'all. Like show up this way, show up in that space. But it was really motivation for myself. And mm -hmm. so once I started doing that, I was just like, dang, I like events. As you see, you know, I like being at events. I like hosting mm -hmm. them. I like being at um, being at um, different events with a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. I did not realize I liked hosting events, galas, or plays until I was in college and I started hosting the NAACP Awards mm -hmm. for my school for ODU. Right. Once I got that little bit of stage presence, I, I was hooked. It but was I, <laughs> Yeah. Once I got that little bit of, like, high from hosting that event, like, I was mm -hmm. super, super hooked. And mm -hmm. so I – um. Um, I ran with that. I ran with that feeling. And so I would start looking for opportunities in my community that I could do it. So it didn't necessarily always look like payment, but it looks like it looks like me saying like, hey, I see that you're doing this event. Like I can definitely be a part in this way. Like, are, do you need help? Can I serve in this way? Um, just to kind of get my name out there. And then obviously when people weren't receptive to me hosting events or speaking on panels, I started creating my own. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I became like pretty big in the community in terms of my own events, because I just started making my own. So right. making my own platforms. And so I would put together an event and it'd be like, you know, Hey, new friends is hosting a vision board party, but then I would be the host. So I right. would find ways to be on the platform as what I wanted to show up as. And so once I started creating my own resume, it's, it's easier now for people to recognize the work that I do and, you know, mm -hmm. give me credibility, um, credibility for it. And so it looked to me to be like, okay, you know, we can, um, we need a host for this event. Like Carter can do it. Like we need somebody to be a speak on this panel. Like she can do it. And so, yeah, it wasn't because everybody was saying yes to me because they weren't. It's like literally I started making my own opportunities. Right. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. So Oh, I love that picture. Yeah, I want to talk about this picture because I remember you saying that you yeah. um, tell the people about this picture, what you were doing when you were going into uh the classrooms with the youth. Um, yeah, it's so funny because it. I was so little in this picture that people probably don't know that was me, but that was me with the blonde hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause they were all like my size. Um, so shout out to um, Naya. So Naya asked me to, she's one of the deans of, she was a dean of a local middle school. And she realized that I was doing like these entrepreneurship things. And she wanted me to speak to her children about entrepreneurship. And so that's kind of where that seed was birthed in terms of like talking to the youth about it. And so I did an entire workshop um, with, a, with a couple of her classes called Name It, Claim It, Monetize Your Passion. And I talked to them about entrepreneurship and we created businesses. So mm -hmm. those forms that they was holding, it was like their goals, their business strategy, what it is that they need from their parents, how would their business serve the community? It was like all of those things. And it was so inspiring. Like I'll go back and I watch those videos um, because when I remember one girl said, she's like, you gonna remember me, you gonna remember wow. my name. Wow. Um, 
but yeah so that was literally i did a workshop about monetizing your passions that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah. and as promised crystal i wanted to go into the comments really quick because mm -hmm. you got a lot of love you're inspiring so many people right now and i do see that there's a question so i did want to pin this question from berta she said how did or do you protect your intellectual property on social media it's so many ventures out here. So how do you stay yeah. Protected? Um. So now I have an attorney. Like you. Okay. So I didn't always do things the right way. Like you know, when you're getting started, you're just excited about the work. Mm -hmm. Um. So when I first got out here, I didn't really think people was paying enough um, attention to me until I created Hey New Friends and somebody literally stole the name mm -hmm. and created like a a whole different entity that had like the name was pretty much spot on. Mm -hmm. um, and it was what I was doing. So now um, I protect myself because I have I have contracts. I have trademarks. Um, I own all of my stuff. Like, you literally mm -hmm. just got to do that foundational work. Like, you need to buy the LLC, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's not that expensive, but it might be expensive to you, you know. But you got to put in that foundational money to make sure your foundation is straight. So I definitely bought the LLCs. I bought the trademarks. Um, and anytime mm -hmm. I do any work, there's contracts. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. And that's yeah. important. That's huge when it comes to running a business because you can have such a phenomenal idea. You can start doing the work under a brand. Yeah. It's incorporated. You don't trademark it. And the next thing you know, someone's... You don't trademark it. You don't buy the domain. And then you be ready to hit exactly. the ground running. You're ready to work and somebody already doing it. And you be like, Dag, that was my name. Like, I had that name first or yeah. something, so, you know? Yeah, that was my, that was my idea. Time. Tell the people one more time the importance of making sure. Tell them one more time. Because oh, the importance of making open. sure you're protecting your brand. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like sometimes even like, you know, we get excited, right? We get excited. We want to share our ideas. But definitely put that paperwork in before you start doing all of that. Or like at least when you start doing it, it's, not, it's happening simultaneously. Like you might not have it approved, but, you know, it's on the way. Um, so just de definitely making sure you like have your ducks in a row in the beginning. Um and I said, like I said, it does look expensive sometimes for some people, but it's mm -hmm. worth it. If you know that it's something you're really passionate about, something you seriously want to do, mm -hmm. like just go ahead and pay for it. Absolutely. And pay, and pay the experts because shout out to the people that I meet on social media that have been helping me do stuff. Like I found like, you know, my finance person, everybody wow. like there's, you create your own circle, like to make mm -hmm. sure you're straight because I don't try, like I used to try to learn everything. Like I used to try to be everything for myself. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. stuff is tiring. Like, yeah. it is tiring. I don't know anything about taxes. I don't know stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know what, I didn't know what type of LLC I needed to form. If I mm -hmm. wanted a nonprofit, I wouldn't know which type of nonprofit I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you just right. need to go ahead and do the research and then find people to help you so that when you are putting your paperwork in, you, it makes sense to what you want to do later. Definitely. You're getting so much love in the comments, Carla. You got, you got people just, you know, you're dropping them gems. Someone said you, you all are dropping gems tonight. We have uh, JoJo said she has great energy. Love it. Aw, thanks. Berta said thank you so much. Thank you for your question, Berta. That was a great question. I'm glad that you got the answer that you were looking for. And Berta, this is, will be a great person for you to connect with. Um, someone said exactly. Man, we got a lot of love going on. Mike said facts. So, yeah, you, you, you dropping those Jews tonight. So, you know, people are really engaged and I'm, yeah, I thank y'all for tuning in. I know, you know, it's hard to keep people's attention, so. Especially when. Shout when, out y'all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Michi just dropped in and said, yes, love her energy. So the people are feeling the energy. So really quick, like this, for those who have just joined, this is Crystal Carter Sade. She is an entrepreneur. She's a philanthropist. She is, you know, a media personality. She's doing great work. Please connect with her, her. Uh, Instagram is at I am Carter Sade S A D E. Yes. You can follow her, her personal page and her, and I'm going to pin your business page right now. Okay. It's Hey New Friends. All right. Let me pin that really quick. All right. And again, if anyone has questions for Carter while she's on, please feel free to drop them in the in the in the comment box. I'm going to pin as many questions as we can while we have her. So, yeah. thank you. We have another comment that says, no, thank you guys for sharing these important informa information for us entrepreneurs, definitely. That's what this platform is for. Kristen is, Carter is blessing us tonight with all the gems. So we're going to keep it, keep it, keep it going. 
speaking engagements, talk to us about that. You're also into those. Yeah, so it's always interesting because, yes, I am into speaking engagements. I like speaking on topics of branding and businesses. Um, I don't necessarily like the love panels. <laughs> I do get invited to them a lot, um, but I'm not really interested in it. But it's interesting because I always tell people, like, you either want a speaker or you want to host. So, I, like I said, I like to speak on certain topics, but I like to host events, and I think people need to understand that there's a difference. So sometimes I'd be like, oh, no, you don't need me as a speaker. You just need me as a host. Like, I'll get up there and I'll introduce your speaker introduce the person that you want to be there make sure the crowd is cool and we move in you know in a good direction but i don't need to speak at this event <laughs> like, mm -hmm. but unless it's, unless it's like business and branding then you know how mm -hmm. let you grow i like that kind of stuff <laughs> wonderful wonderful so y'all heard her if y'all need someone to MC your next event your next platform she's open yeah, to speaking um, engagements as well yeah definitely that and so i know a lot of stuff is virtual now so i am doing mm -hmm. virtual conferences for people you know mm -hmm. people I, I think it's so dope that people are still making stuff happen in the middle of, you know still out here working like conferences Definitely. are happening you know all these online events so people can still feel mm -hmm. like they're part of something like you know even with my own organizations mm -hmm. we host virtual events so that people can be a part so i don't know i feel like we're gonna still be here for a minute in 2021 so we might get you know just need to get comfortable <laughs> Definitely, definitely. We got to be innovative and creative in any circumstance if we're running a business so definitely that is yeah. key. um i do have some a question you, someone said, can you explain the process time frame for the people? If you can clarify the question a little bit, I just want to know exactly what you're talking about. We're definitely a Carter. Just kind of like clarify what exactly you're talking about with your question, and we'll get right back to it. Um, so, I guess this is what everybody has been waiting for. The, the conversation, <laughs> like, hey, new friends. This is your baby right here. Like, out of everything that you've done, this is what's going on right now. This is what's popping right now. Tell the people how Hey New Friends started, yeah. what the mission of Hey New Friends is, and how people can get connected. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely my baby. So, Hey New Friends started as a passion project. So, mm -hmm. I will be on social media telling people that I needed friends in the city. Like, I needed to connect with people. Like, what can I do this weekend? Like, where we at? Like, if I didn't want to be in the house, and when you don't really know anybody, it's kind of hard to find friends, um, kind of hard to find friends and know, like, what's happening besides mm -hmm. Eventbrite. And Eventbrite don't be having all the events. Like, yeah. Oh, no. So, yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted, so I made a post one day, and I was like, you know, I'm going to host a brunch. Like, I'm just going to have this brunch, and I'm going to invite you guys. If you want to come, like, send me an email. Oh, I love that picture. That's my bestie. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna host this brunch. And if y'all want to come to send me an email, like, you know, tap in with me. And so I was so shocked that all of these women was like, Oh, I want to come to this brunch. I want to come to this brunch. So I really just picked a weekend and we went out, we went to this brunch and it, and that at that time, right? Like, Hey, new friends wasn't even an idea. It was, um, just like, I wanted to do this meetup and actually I was going to call it sexless in the city because uh Yes, I was gonna call it sexless in the city because I was single. I ain't know nobody. I was by myself. And then I was like, who what woman really wants to be a part of a group called Sexless in the City? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I quickly deviated from that idea. Mm -hmm. And so after we had that first meeting, um, and we made goals and stuff. After that, I went home with my best friend and I was like, This needs to be a thing. Like we need to continue to do stuff like this. I need to have friends and you know i need to make this a thing and so that's how i came up with the idea of hey new friends it was off the strength of me just wanting to connect with people so tell us a little bit about that process like how do you connect people through your through your organization so so hey new friends is a social service organization for women who are looking to create cultivate lasting resourceful fun and rewarding relationships wait <laughs> so, a minute wait a minute wait a minute everybody drop a clap your hands emoji <laughs> down, broke her mission down like that like yeah. that was dynamic right there yeah Everybody so we dropped her a clap of hand in the comment box she just did that so funny um, so <laughs> tell us about that though like how do you like like what, what's that process like how do people get who, who yeah are you? so the, the premises of our model is more like you know new to the dmv me friends no worries like we got you get connected and mm -hmm. so the fact is that people dc is a transient city right so many people come here, like, and it's a melting pot. Like, there's so many people here from so many places. And there's a lot of natives here as well, but there's a lot of people from everywhere. And so, mm -hmm. you know, as transplants, we want to feel like we belong too. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to be, like, that connection to the community. Like I said, so mm -hmm. I wanted to be the hub that you could come to. Like, hey, I'm new to the city. I don't know nobody. I need some friends. Like, what are we doing? I didn't want to just be, like, the hub that you thought of. Like, oh, they host women empowerment events. They do mm -hmm. events like that. Like, I didn't want to be known for events. Like, that's not what this was. Like, I wanted yeah. to be known 
for the meetup. So like I wanted to have the friends that you could call up to go to the mall, the clubs, you, the people you can call up to go to the club, to the happy hour, to church, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that people were able to connect with a friend. Like, mm -hmm. so if that meant you needed to come over to the house and have a glass of wine because you was going through something and y'all needed to pray or they needed to help you comb your hair, I wanted to create that community. Um, mm -hmm. So of course we do host events. We do th do things like that on a larger scale, but I'm really big on relationships. So my organization is all about intimacy and building and fostering relationships. So um, the way you get connected is obviously HeyNewFriends.com. We do, like I said, a lot of community work. We host monthly monthly events, and I can't even say monthly events anymore because I now have a team, which I pray for, and I'm so grateful for. Like, so I now have a team, and we ha we host events more than once a month now. So there's always something you can do, whether it's a volunteer activity, you know, you want to be in a part of book club, or you do want to get together for an event, you can do that. So we just had, um, we just had what? We just had a vision board party, a virtual vision board party, and I was sad right. because. The first time we did it, it was really in public. Like it was at a local, um, a local bar on 8th Street, and it was so much fun. And so I wanted to recreate that experience, but I wanted to do it in a safe way. And now that you know, I have an events coordinator. Oh, that's our book club. So um, now that I have an events coordinator, I was able to do that event virtually. But we are going to plan to do some in-person events too. Obviously, within COVID regulations, but we are big on right now. We're big on virtual events, so that way we can still build those connections and relationships. That's huge. That's huge. So I wanted to piggyback really quick before we we let you go on some the question that we were just trying to get more clarification on, just to make sure that his question is answered. How long does the process take to complete and have your LLC legit on paper? Good question. Um, I think it depends on the state because when I first registered my first LLC in Virginia, I got everything on the spot. Mm -hmm. So like as soon as you pay the fee, you start getting the, you get the articles of organization, you get all of that like immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the same way in most other cities too. So you just pay your your whatever it is that your fee, put in your you know see if the name is not taken, and create the article or organization. So it's immediately yours. They send it, they actually send it to your email now, and you can give them an option to say you wanted them to mail it to your house. Got yeah. it, got it. Hopefully that answered your question. And we have another question. Jojo asks, do you have an app? or are you considering it? Yes, I am considering it. I have been considering it for the last two years. <laughs> so um, I just didn't know what I wanted to encompass, but now I have an idea of everything that I want to be in this app. So yes, I am definitely considering an app. So we, 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 we'll be uh, looking for that, that app launch soon? Yes, um, definitely okay. probably 2022 because the goal of cool. the goal is that I want to hate new friends in every city. So I need there to be a hate new friend right. in DC. I hate new friends, Houston. I hate new friends, Charlotte. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be in all the major cities, and so I want to be able to connect people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. that's I mean, that, that idea in itself, just to connect individuals who are new to a city together yeah. and create a, a, a kind of like a, you know, like a somewhat like a sorority amongst yeah. them, you know, and, and, and kind of like connect networks and things like that. That is that is brilliant, and I think that that's something because that, people need community. Like yeah. nobody really thrives by themselves. Like we really right. need we really need community, and like I said, it just goes beyond just having these um, monthly or quarterly meetups. Like I need everyday relationships. Like I don't need to just exactly. go and feel good at one event. Like oh, I went to this exactly. event, lifted my spirits, and right. then I walk away, and I still don't know any of those people there. Like I want the extra. I want the extra mile. I need the <laughs> relationship outside of the event. And that's what's huge about it. Like, you're not just going out to have a casual drink and conversation over brunch. You're yeah. literally putting together, you have you have activities for the members of Hey New Friends. Right, right. You also have, um, I want you to speak on, like, the, the volunteering sector that you have. Like, Yeah, and so, like, we do, a, we do a lot of different things. Something that we launched this year that I was really excited about that was Sister Circle. And so, like, you know, where we had, like, an actual therapist, like, come in and just talk to them weekly about topics around, you know, for strengthening relationships with their parents, for strengthening relationships with their you know, the significant others, figuring out their business journey, figuring out who they were spiritually. Like, they have real good conversations. Like, they would be. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, so that built, like, the sisterhood part of it. And, yes, there mm -hmm. is, like, the, the volunteer wing. So if you are a person who wants to plug yourself into the community and give back, we are – we have two volunteer coordinators now, Chelsea and Demetria. <laughs> so happy about them. Um, we have – you met them. Um, so we have two volunteer coordinators now, and they're, like, making sure that we are connected to organizations in the city and we can find ways to serve. And so we're looking to obviously do some things on our own and partner with other organizations like yourself in the community. But it just feels good to know that, you know, we have like 
we have this like camaraderie amongst people because you know it's, it's it's really exciting when you get people to buy into your own idea because again this was like a passion project for me and i knew like all i knew is i wanted friends like wow. i didn't realize how many other people wanted friends or how many people wow. felt like you know it was hard to make friends in adulthood so it's it's really beautiful to see it wonderful yes it is indeed it is so you do have a major announcement oh i do i do let's i forgot about, let's talk about which actually launched today yes a new friends podcast let's talk about which let's just do just go ahead and give your spill on what it is yeah, so the Hey New Friends podcast is something that I wanted to do for a minute, but it's crazy because I didn't want to be the face of it. I actually didn't want to be a part of it. <laughs> I didn't want to be a part of it. I wanted to choose ladies in the community to do it. So I think the goal would be maybe like later, some years down the road to expand and allow other people to be a part of it. But I just wanted to create like the voice behind the program. So like Hey New Friends is local right now in terms of DM the DMV area, but this podcast is to connect women all over the world. And so, like, as we move and expand into different communities, different states, we'll have this, like, rock in the middle. And so we have real-life conversations. So it's not always necessarily, like, um, resources all the time, but it's, like, real sisterhood conversations or real talk conversations between me and my childhood best friend. So I'm super excited about that because when I said Hey New Friends started off the strength of an idea, she was there from day one. Like, she literally had just moved to the DMV um a week before that and I was like I'm doing this meetup and it was perfect timing because she had just moved here from Michigan and she needed friends yep that's her that's Tanisha <laughs> um and she needed friends and so having this podcast with her is just so great like our chemistry is already there we've been friends like I said since childhood we grew up living around the corner from one another um and so like we've been friends since we was like 11 so this podcast is like y'all get the the real us um and she's like in school right now at Howard, um, getting her PhD to be a psychologist. So she gives really good game. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah. so it I also like you'll see a different side of me. So like I'm always talking about businesses and branding and things like that. But on this podcast, like she'd be making me talk about stuff that I'd really be like, girl, like, <laughs> are we really it's talking? A, a are we really you... talking about that? Yeah. So it's like you know, it's the whole scope of the woman. So some of those hard conversations that you'd be like. Okay, like I really don't care to talk about that, but that is a good topic. I guess I should say something. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, this. have you ever thought about expansion, expanding Hey New Friends to perhaps having a, a male wing? Where so I get approached them? about this idea all the time because yeah. one time we did um, a cuffing season, like you know, mm -hmm. it was the call. It was called cuffing season, the last cuff of the season. It was like a singles mixer, and I hosted this like singles mixer, mixer at Half Smoke, and I brought these people together. And it was mm -hmm. so hard to find men to be a part. And I always thought like you know, if I, there was like a men version of Hey New Friends, I would mm -hmm. always have like a brother chapter or like just a guy chapter to do stuff yeah. with. Um, men bring it up to me all the time, but nobody ever executes it. I think it would be dope. Obviously, it would be called Hey New Friends. That's probably a little too feminine. But if there could be a male organization that, you know, outside of Frats and the Divine Nines, it would be great. Like, it would be dope because I think, you know, you see a lot of women's, a women movement. Women get together. We, we curate and we cultivate these things, but men need it just as much. So if there could be, like, you know, a male group of men that just get together for meetups, like, for the purpose of just strengthening relationships and having those day-to-day -day connections, like... Stop somebody do it because I definitely help. Like definitely, definitely, and I yeah. love your perspective um, on that. You know, because I think the brothers need some spaces like that where we can create. Yeah, because you know, women, we always on the stage. Yeah. We always <laughs> having the conversations. We're always doing that. Like I think y'all need y'all more of y'all own communities. Like that would be so dope. Like y'all own brotherhoods outside of like you know, frat the divine nine. Mm -hmm. Like y'all need real organizations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, listen. This has been a phenomenal conversation tonight, Carter. Yes, you, you did an lot. awesome job. I'm so proud. I know. I was a little I was a little nervous a little bit. I had the media personality. I'm interviewing a, a real life. You do this. No, but you are very you engaging. You had okay. awesome questions. Like I, I yeah, had a great time here. I had a great time here with you as well. And I want to thank you on behalf of Community College Source for coming on tonight, sharing your story with us, you know, as you can see in the comments, there's a lot of people saying congratulations, a lot of love. Oh, thank you. A lot of people saying that you dropped a lot of gems tonight. And I'm sure that you'll be able to gain a lot of connections through this conversation. And that's the goal with this Yeah, I was gonna say, that's the, at least that's the goal for me, y'all, because like, I don't, I, I love doing these things. I like talking to people, I like giving back, but I hate when I walk away from them and people don't follow up or connect later. Like, wow. I don't care if it's just sliding in your DMs and saying, hey, like I heard you on the show. 
like let's stay connected like i like relationships i like people <laughs> um so i like i like when people do the follow-up game so don't be afraid to hit follow i do follow back or just decide in my dms if you have like something you actually want to say or want to talk about definitely definitely y'all hear that like if you're on right now please connect with carter she's doing a lot of things she's just a great individual to, like her energy is so vibrant she's a great uh, <laughs> person to have conversation with about life about business so yeah. please connect with her any ladies on here right now that's interested in being a part of hey new friends you don't technically have to not be from the dmv area to join hey new friends no nope, you don't you don't you want to be around like-minded individuals. Connect with Hey New Friends, and you know, you know, get a, be a part of that movement. So yeah, we are saying, um, we're officially a membership community, y'all. We are open for membership. We were we'll take you in gladly with welcome arms. Um, yeah, I feel like I mean I'm just so fortunate and so lucky because every woman in my group is just dope. Like everybody brings good energy, good vibes. Like we really are the group where you feel like women are really rooting for women, and it's nothing like sideways because. At first, I wasn't always a woman's woman, which we kind of talked about a little earlier. I was more like, I was raised by men, and y'all are catty. But this group, it ain't like that at all. <laughs> that is, that is yeah. amazing. Amazing. So what we like to do at this part, part of the, the show, you know, when we're wrapping up, we like to open up the floor for you, one, to talk about what's next. What's next with Hey New Friends? We know you just now, you know, gave the information about your podcast. I do want you to kind of, let the people know how they can find the podcast if they want to tune in. Um, when do you when do you all come on the podcast? What's the schedule so people yes. can uh, have information on how to be a part of that? And also, anything else that you have going on? Any virtual events? Anything that you're working on? Um, once, whenever this pandemic is past us and we're able to connect in person again, anything that you have going on? You so know, all of all of my ass. Do you want to know my ass too? Okay. There you go. So <laughs> listen. And then after that, I want you to leave us with a few inspiring words, like some of the things, some, something that you can tell to, to someone who may need a little inspiration, may need, whether it's a quote, whether it's something that you live by, just something yeah. that you can drop on them before you go that can perhaps change their perspective in their, if they're in a, in a specific space where they feel as though they need it. Okay. Um, so what's next? Um, like he said, I did drop the Hey New Friends podcast today. You can actually like, I would actually really, really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to our channel. It is a video podcast, so you'll see it on YouTube. So if you click the link in my bio right now, it'll say um, Hey New Friends podcast, tune in. So you'll be able to see our teaser clip that's up now. Or if you just go to the Hey New Friends page, the link is also there as well. But definitely subscribe to our channel so that you guys will not miss an episode. We'll drop the first episode Next week, um, there will be bi-weekly. So y'all will be able to tune in with us bi-weekly on our video podcast. And um, Faye New Friends is actually up next. We'll, we're volunteering on the 30th. I don't know all the details of it, but if you are in the organization, then you're going to get the email tomorrow. But <laughs> we're volunteering on, on the 30th. And then we February is coming up. So, you know, Valentine's is coming up. Um, we're hosting our own Valentine's Day nice. event. Yeah, our own Valentine's Day event for the ladies. So you can plug in with us there. As far as me on the other side, I am um I'm always looking for opportunities, like I said, to connect with people. I enjoy doing podcasts and things like this. I'm looking for people who want to be a part of the Hey New Friends podcast for season two. I'm looking to interview people as well as Carter Table Talks. Um, I'm really big on supporting black businesses and brands. So if you have one, definitely connect with me. I would love to showcase your businesses on my platform as well and if you have any like if you need a host if you need an mc if you need a voiceover artist definitely tap in with me so that's that part <laughs> um right. and so just for some words of encouragement i guess i would want to say leave the people with you know god has given us many gifts many talents and that i believe that we can utilize them all utilize everything that's in your hands that does not necessarily mean that you have to ex execute everything at one time but i am a firm believer that you can use all of your gifts and so, like, you know, even if that means writing it down your ideas in an idea journal or anything like that, just make sure that you're doing your part and putting those visions um, out into the air, manifesting them and being, like, really true to what it is that you're called to do, what's in your heart. And so just hold, tr hold true to that. Stay, stay, stay true to that is what I meant. And keep going. So that's my advice. I love it. I love it. On behalf of Community Connoisseurs, thank you so much, Carter, for coming on Blessing Our Platform tonight. Keep on striving, keep on thriving, keep on motivating. Like, keep on doing your thing, girl. Like, 
anything that we can kind of collaborate or that we 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 already got that in the works. Yeah, we're going to we be doing some stuff. You already know it was understood. It ain't got to be explained. Exactly. But listen, keep on connecting and keep on doing your thing. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. And, we're, and thank we're you for this pl for this platform. Like I, like I said, I love to see the work that you guys are actually doing in the community. It's very, very inspiring, very motivating. But this this part of the segment, too, a part of your organization is dope, like highlighting people. I like it. Absolutely. All right. Well, you have a great evening. Thanks again. Thank we'll you for having me. Soon. Bye, guys. All right. Peace. So there you have it. Carter Sade. She is just amazing. Like her energy is out of this world. Thank you all for joining tonight. All of you who have came on and tapped into the moment of truth tonight. This segment again is every Thursday night at 7.30 PM. We have a lot of individuals who are doing great work such as Carter, you know, and they come on and share their stories. They inspire and they talk about their, 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 their current endeavors. And you know, this is just a platform for you all to connect as well. So join us next week. If you're not following Community Connoisseurs already, please give us a follow at community underscore connoisseurs. Visit our website at www.communityconnoisseurs.org. We are a self-funded nonprofit organization, so please visit our website. And if you have the spirit of giving, please hit the donate button because we, a lot of what we do, we are self-funded and we need support. Um, so thank you all again for joining. And again, if you have a minority entrepreneur, if you are an entrepreneur and you have a DMV based business, please email us at info at communityconnoisseurs.org. Send us your business information. We want to highlight your business on our website. Go to our website, check it out. We want to promote your business on our website. That's one of our pillars, minority entrepreneurship. So we want to highlight the great work that you all are doing. Again, on behalf of Community Connoisseurs, thank you for joining. See you next week. Peace.